Right, so here's something very interesting that no one is going to ask you to do but it's important to try and explain to each other what is going to be happening in calculus and what the whole story is about. Now imagine if I had a random graph of f of x, right, which is passing through a particular point A and another point which is point B. Of course, um, if we ask you to find the gradient between these two points, you will be finding what we call the average gradient. And we know for a fact that in order to find that gradient, I'm going to call that gradient M, right? In order to find M, you're going to say, okay, M is actually y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we all know this. Now, let's just give the first uh, point A an x coordinate and just say that x coordinate is going to be x, right? Now, if the x coordinate at point A, which lies here, which is obviously x units from the um, origin, x units from the origin, that's actually x units. That's why the x coordinate of A is um, going to be that. And I also want to give B an X coordinate, but then the distance from B to A, that distance from A to B there, I'll just call it uh, H. So you're moving along the X axis, which means from uh, point A all the way to point B, moving on the X axis to move from there to get to here. That whole space there, uh, the spacing, I'm gonna call that H. That means if this piece is X and that piece is H, then the whole distance is just going to become X plus H. It's just X, and now you are adding an extra amount, which is an H there. Okay, then those will be the X coordinates of both point A and another X coordinate of point B. Now, in order to find the corresponding Y values that we did agree when we were looking for average gradient, if X is what you have here, to find the corresponding X value, just take this X coordinate, you substitute into the equation of whatever the function that you could be working with. Now, in this case, that means that my Y coordinate, the corresponding Y coordinate in this case is going to be um, f of x is just going to be um, f of x. That's actually what the corresponding y value is going to be. Similarly, if x is x plus h at b and I want the corresponding y value, I just need to take this and I substitute into the equation of f of x. That means that the corresponding y value is just going to be f of um, that x plus h that I'm sitting with there. It's going to be f of x plus h and um, those will be the complete coordinates of both point A and point B. Now, once I have what I'm looking at now, I can now start working out the gradient by saying y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's go and see what will happen if we do that. So my y2 is this. So my y2 is f of x plus h minus. There's minus my y1. y1 is f of x. All right, and you need to divide that by x2. My x2 is this business here, that x plus h minus my x1 is just x, so minus x. And if you simplify that, you're going to end up with something very interesting. So it's going to be on the numerator f of x plus h minus f of x divided by the x here will subtract that x off. It'll just be left with h on the denominator. Now, what calculus is all about is we're trying to actually find a gradient at a point. It's very insane. Remember, you can find a gradient between two points. So what we're essentially doing in this case is we don't want to find the gradient between two points because we know how to do that. We want to find a gradient at one point. It sounds very crazy. So the only way of doing that is by moving these two points together. We're just trying to move them until A and B are exactly at one place, which means we're going to bring B closer and closer and closer and closer and closer towards A. And as we bring B closer and closer towards A, notice what happens to that value of H. It becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. What do I mean by that is if I move B from there and I put B here, right, you will notice that now the spacing from A and B is now smaller than what it was when we started. And then I'm going to keep bringing B closer even more so that it's here and then they're going to be there you'll notice that the space between uh, A and B is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which means this H is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And I'm going to keep doing that and bringing B even more closer towards A. You will notice that the space keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we want to do that until A and B are exactly on top of each other. They're exactly at one point, which means we want this H to get closer and closer until it becomes zero. So that's why in order to work out what we call the gradient at one point, right? The gradient at one point, which then becomes a derivative. We say, okay, we want this to be closer and closer and closer towards zero. But you know, it will never be zero because if it's going to be zero, you'll have division by zero. So what happens is we then say 
f prime of x which is the derivative which is also known as the gradient at one point will be the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h this is the formula that you're going to use to find the gradient at one point and this is known as uh, the derivative right the derivative by or from first principle sometimes people say it's by definition from first principles so it's actually um, coming straight from the formula for gradient which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so whenever anybody asks you to work out the derivative they're essentially asking you to work out the gradient just that not the gradient between two points but the gradient at one point so we achieve that by forcing our two points to come closer and closer to what each other until they become one thing at the same point which is only possible if the space h becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so we want to find what is the limit as h approaches zero as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to become zero and in order to work out the derivative or the gradient at the one point we're going to use this formula which is known as the formula for first principles